Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We have the right to connect with uh, Andrew once again. So we have, we used to have him, we used to have him uh, two years ago, Andrew, yes? Yes. With us? Okay, yes. Ah. Now Andrew will, will talk about the key to the motivating language learners. Now this, the, the time is yours, Andrew. Okay, lovely. Please. Thank you. So, Salaam Alaikum. <laughs> very good, very good. So, I'm very pleased to be here again. Uh, it's been, um, I was, last year I was at the last, the, se the second conference you had. So, I had a very good time there. I'm pleased I was invited back. So, thank you very much to Dr. Iksana. Okay, so the talk today is going to be about the keys to motivating language learners. Um, so that's the, what the plan is. Here we go, I'll just maximize the screen. Um, the PowerPoint isn't working exactly as we wanted, so you're going to get slide by slide rather than point by point, but that's fine. So let's start. So you can see the slides okay? Yes. yes. Bagus, bagus, bagus. Thank you. Okay. So everyone wants to succeed at what they're doing and really the key to success is what they are doing, not what someone else wants them to do. To understand this, the best saying is the one that I'm sure most of you are aware of is that you can take a horse to water but you can't make a drink. You can motivate the horse to go to the water, you can even force them to go there, but only if they want a drink will they drink. So that's what's a really important thing to understand and I'm sure all of you are aware of that. But I wanted to make sure that's where we're starting from. So learning is really unique. It's not a one-off something that happens. It happens over time and it only happens if we stay focused, attentive and involved. Without that, learning will just not happen. It will only be sporadic. So I used motivating the title as a way of connecting with you all, but I believe that in language learning a much better word to use is engaging. Engaging gives you a sense that the person has to be involved themselves into the action, whereas motivate doesn't give you the same feeling. So I want to use that word in preference. Um, so the teacher's role, the teacher has a role here and their role is to engage the learners. And so all they can do is they, they can't really engage them, but they can provide the conditions where the learners will want to be engaged. So we get engaged, and if you think about engagement, it's the same thing as, for example, when you went to learn to ride a bicycle, or you went to learn to ride a, um, to drive a car. You have to be 100% there. There was no thinking about it, there was no, you know, talking about it, you had to be 100% there. This is the real meaning of engagement, is that when all of you is there, all your attention, all your thoughts, all your feelings, everything is there. That is true engagement. So, th there, I want to first look at the keys to engagement. And if we can start off in the top left corner, the first thing, of course, is that we have to pay attention. Um, but paying attention is not enough in the area of language learning because basically language learning is a skill. It's not an idea, it's not a knowledge, it's actually skill. So we have to actually do. So doing is as important in learning. And what I'm talking about doing here, in language learning, the most important skill where we have to do is speaking. So if we don't speak, um, very difficult to learn a language. You can do it, but very, very difficult. So doing is, I want to put in here speaking is what we need to focus on. So as we pay attention and we speak, uh, mainly we do some, we're actually doing, our skills will grow. And it's important here that we are talking about skills. We're not talking about understanding. We're not talking about knowledge. We're talking about skills. 
being able to do, so be able to talk about something, be able to describe something, to be able to ask questions. And this is all to do with doing. It's not to do with... Uh, of course you have to understand, of course you have to know, but the real test is can you do it? And if you can do it, and you keep doing it, your skills will grow. And if your skills grow, and they will do if you follow this, this sort of circle, your confidence will grow. And it's the same thing you can imagine is that when you, when you find you can do something new, you you find a rush of endorphins, a rush of hormones that make you feel all excited and all happy about yourself. You go, oh, I can do that. Isn't it fantastic? And because of this feeling that comes from the skills, you you can do things you couldn't do before. Your your confidence grows. And and when your confidence grows you will want to pay more attention. You will want to do more. So this is a cycle of engagement. So if, if you can manage to do this in the classroom with the students and the students do this, they will be engaged and they will be with you 100%. And that's the, the real secret to having students motivated in the class to keep learning, is to have this happen so they want to learn. It's not us doing something, us providing candy or us providing lollies or us providing elephant stamps or some words of encouragement, the, the encouragement they get is when their skills grow and they know, oh, I can do this. Oh, this is great. And this is the key to it. So if we can achieve this, this is the gold standard in motivation when we can get our students um, engaged like this. Now, I'll pause here for a moment um, does anybody have a burning question they would like to ask or something not clear? So far, so good? Okay. Summer, summer. Very good. Oops, what happened here? Okay. Um, let's go back to here. Okay. So... Um, okay, here we go. All right, so from there, the, the next important thing is to look at what, what are the, the keys for getting students actually um, to want to pay attention, to want to participate, to want to, to want to be involved in the class, to begin it. That's the first top left-hand corner. And um, it, all of this actually relates to the rest of the, the steps as well. So... Okay, I'll just do this. Here we go. So, these three keys um, are really actually very, very important for you as, as a teacher. Um, and without following these three steps, the rest, the other thing we just talked about, will not happen so easily. So, the first step is is that as a teacher, you have to find out what the student's skills are. Now, it's the same thing. As just imagine being in a strange city and you have to get somewhere. So you know the address, so you go to the map, look up the map, and you find where you're going to. So, so what's, what is it? Apart from finding the map, what else do you need to know? You need to know where you're going and what else do you need to know? You would like to call out? No one speaking? Is that because they don't, don't understand my question or it's too difficult or what? Can you, can you say again your questions? Sure. So you, you, you've you gone to a strange city and you have to go yeah. somewhere. You have to go. So you look it up on the map. So what's the first thing you have to do on the map? Does anybody want to try? When you have a map, what is the first thing you have to do? Find the place. Find the place. Okay, that's find, find which place. Which place? Where you are. That's right. That's right. You have to find out where you are. If you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're. You don't know how to get to where you're going. 
So that's the same thing in teaching. We have to know where the students are. If we don't know where they are, we will not be able to help them to get to where they have to get to. So that's a critical thing, and I will talk about each of these steps more in a minute. So the second thing we've only we've talked about, but I want to go back because it's so important, is that skills only develop when learners do. If they if they don't, they have to speak, and speaking is really the 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 engine that drives language learning. It's not grammar, it's not pronunciation. The engine is speaking. If speaking people don't speak. Very, very difficult to learn a language. You can do it, uh, it's possible, but you're not going to get great results. So the important thing is to do. That's the second thing. And the third thing is that students need ongoing feedback. And without giving them feedback, the students will not know whether they're going the right way or the wrong way. They just keep going. And I will talk about that in a minute as well. Uh, so what, what do we mean by feedback and how do we give feedback and what kind of feedback do we give? So let's move on from here. So as far as skills go, there are different skill areas. And each one of these areas is an important skill area that, that, that we can work on and the students need to work on, basically. So one is the phonemic level, just individual sounds and, and then clusters of sounds when you join sounds together to make from at you can make at and then you can make at a school so these are all clusters or groups of sounds so each one of these is a skill to be able to put this together first of all to say it and then to put it together the next thing is the grammatical side which I'm sure all of you are aware of but this is a separate skill to the phonemic level and is that the issue of rhythm and this is the beat the stress of how you have how we speak in English, which is really different to most other languages. Most uh, English is a um, like a, has a rhythm which is very unusual in other in, compared to other languages, and so students need to pick, be able to recognize and to do and to follow the rhythm that we use. And there's the whole issue of fluency, and then there's the issue of melody and tone <clears throat> of of, those, of how you speak. So each of these is a separate skill area, and each of these can be focused on when we're working on, on speaking. And they have to be focused on, because without focusing on them, uh, it's it's, the students will have difficulty making the improvements that, 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 they, that they need to, to become really competent at the language. So let's look at examples of doing, of speaking. So the first thing is that the important thing to to recognize whenever we do something is that we do things when usually when we like to do something or when there's a challenge to do something and in an english class i think the important thing is challenge i mean liking to do something is part of it because you have to like it otherwise the challenge won't be you won't take the challenge on so but the challenge is really important and this is where if i go back to the first slide it's really important to know where, or the second slide, it's really important to know where the students are. So the challenge can't be too difficult because basically it'll make them frustrated and they'll give up. And it can't be too easy because it'll bore them. So, the, so we can only get the right challenge if we know where they are. So for a teacher what this means is that we have to be very attentive in a class. We have to be listening all the time looking all the time and understanding what's happening with our students. Where are their weaknesses? What are they doing? What aren't they doing? And once we understand where they're at, we can better design the lessons around what they need. So the students can talk in class um, with, you in the, with you there as well. They can, you can get them to talk in groups. They can read aloud. They can read silently. They can work on problems that that you, that you set them. And in all of these sort of speaking um, situations, and even when you're teaching something more formally, it's really important that they basically be speaking back to you as soon as possible. Not after half an hour, not, in, not even after 10 minutes. Typically what I teach, it's no more than one minute of me 
and five minutes of them, or ten minutes of them. Um, so to help them speak more and to help them struggle with the language, to help them understand, I don't know what's the standard in Indonesia or where you, where you are teaching now, but what I recommend is that there be no bilingual dictionaries at all in the class. And if I see them with my students, I, I just confiscate them. Because they have to understand that they will learn to speak by speaking, not by looking up a dictionary. No, lang no first language. So in your case, no Indonesian at all. Nothing. Not one word. So whatever they can speak in English, that, that's what they need to work with. And that way, they will be um, working at the problems that you give them at the level they're at. And as long as the problems aren't too difficult, that they will have a go at it and see if they can produce the, the situations that basically ask them to, to talk about. Struggling to express yourself is really a part of learning, especially a new language. I mean, all of you have learned a new language, one, maybe two or three new language, other languages. And I'm sure all of you know that, you know, you have to, it's not, it's a, it's not a struggle. It doesn't have to be a painful struggle, but you have to, your brain has to work. <laughs> you know, translating something is not going to help you. It's being able to understand by looking at something, by understanding the clues, by understanding what people are, how they look, how they feel. And from there, you can actually provide the, the stimulus, provide the input that will help them and, and get them to talk. That's what is really key. So I'm going on to the feedback, which um, I think it's, it's really critical. And my experience in Australia and other places I've been to around the world is, is that for the most part, teachers don't give good feedback. Um, and I give feedback all the time, continually in my class. Um, so, you know, usually not one minute passes or two or three without me giving some kind of feedback. And the feedback is not meant to be heavy. In my class, students laughing all the time. I think laughter is a very good thing. So, you know, it's not meant to be serious, but it's meant to be giving them indication that either they're on target or no, they have to work more carefully at whatever the, the thing they need to work at. So it can be, for example, being more careful with their rhythm, being more careful with their sound, the sounds they're making, being more careful with the structure, they're missing out a word. So for each student in the class, you have to judge what, when they're speaking, what kind of feedback you give them. But your job, job of a teacher, is to provide feedback. And the feedback is, I never or very seldom do I say no. I just don't say no. I just indicate uh, with my hand to show them that, you know, stop or think about it or do it again. And so this is the kind of feedback I give. Now, there are different kinds of feedback you can look for and give. And it all depends on how well you understand where they're at. And so you have, you have to find out in, in, your, in the feedback you give in the kind of exercise you give, do they know what, what you're teaching at all? If they, if they don't know anything about it, of course you have to give some kind of input. But many times I find, especially with the way teachers, students are taught these days, is that many students have been taught English a lot of times, and they have a lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding, but they can't do. So what I look for is do they recognize what they need to say. Can they, re can they create from what they know what they have to say? So I don't say a lot. I encourage them to, to create from what they already know. I, find, I know what they already know. So I try to get them, encourage them to think about what they're saying. And I'll, and I'll, in the next slide, I'll show you what sorts of things I do. Um, so they can figure it. They can figure it out with help from me. I want them to work it out. And I'm sure in Indonesia, because I've worked with students in Indonesia before, that your students are very similar. That they actually know a hell of a lot. They know. They know many many things. They just can't put it all together. And so 
my job oh. is to work with them so they can actually drag up, um, pull out from their mind, find in, their, in themselves knowledge they have and then put it into speaking so they can produce it by themselves. And once they can produce it, even with a the struggle, then the next thing is to get into to say clearly, say it accurately, with the right rhythm, the right melody, and finally confidently and appropriately. So all this, of course, can take time. It can take sometimes days. It can take sometimes longer. But every one of these skill areas is important. It's not just the grammar. It's how you say it. Do you say it with meaning? Do you say it with feeling? Do you make somebody laugh when you say it? Or do you make them smile? Or do you make them want to talk to you? So real speaking is communication. It's not just talking aloud. It's trying to communicate with people. So that's what I work with all the time. Okay. So there are different kinds of feedback. Um, and I, I use lots of different kinds of feedback. Um, that, um, did I miss something out one of the slides? Let's just double check if I missed a slide or not. Um, I don't think I did. No. So, um, the, you, the feedback is really important when you give feedback that you know where they're at. So, you only provide what's necessary. I really try to minimize what I say and what I do and get them to pull out from themselves. So you can use, I didn't put, I forgot to put down here, but you can use your hand to indicate there's a word missing. So I use my fingers a lot in the class. So if there's five words in, for example, we got five fingers up, you can put five fingers up. I point to one finger, go through the, each of the words with pointing the first word. So for example, he with the first finger went, second finger, third finger, two, fourth finger, the, fifth finger school if they're missing two I will then pull down the finger and then show them the word missing and get them to think about what's the word missing so this is this kind of um, this is feedback to them telling them that there's something missing and I don't say anything I just indicate there's something missing you can do the same thing on the board uh, by writing the sentence on the board and, for example, rubbing the word out there missing and putting a line there and showing, okay, what's this word? You can, if the word is wrong or it's, or it's the wrong tense or it's the, the wrong kind of word, you can underline it or you can even cross it out. And if you're working with rhythm, you can tap it. So these kinds of feedback, are, these different kinds of feedback are important because I try to minimize what I say and show them by doing what they're, what they're doing, what they need to pay more attention to. So I use my face a lot, I use silence a lot. So I make funny faces at them sometimes to make them think, oh, what did I say? And they know that when I make a funny face at them, that they're, they're doing something which is a bit of a problem and they'll stop and, and I'll go back and try to fix it. Sometimes they can fix it. Sometimes I get the rest of the class to help them fix it. Usually I try to get the class to work together. And that way they become closer together as a class. And the last kind of feedback I want to talk about is simplifying. Sometimes students can make like these long sentences or complex sentences that are really difficult to you know, fix up. And so I break the, break the sentence up into, into the parts, into the phrases, and get them to work on each phrase to get the phrases fixed up. So once the phrases are fixed up, then they can put it together. So rather than fix the whole sentence, bring it back to, I bring it back to the simplest problem possible. Because when it's simple, they can fix it up. It's the, it's the complex sentences that are difficult sometimes to, to know what to do with. And um, that's what um, the best help I can give my students is to help them with this. Okay, so um, what I want to do now is give you an example of using feedback. 
and I'll put up on the I have to uh, put up on the screen another uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You got the screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. All right. Now, I, I'm not sure how this is going to work because this I don't hear you that clearly, but maybe or I can or one of you can um, act as the the, the speaker there. So what I want to do is look at the um, at the at the sound at the letter A. So in the in the top you can see at the top left hand corner there's a a word cat. So cat is one example of where you see the A. But in fact in English there are ten different ways we can make the sound we can make sounds from the letter A. Okay, ten different ways. So, so all of you, I'm sure, have got an understanding of, of, of spelling and of sounds, but I think this might stretch some of you because not many people are aware of this. So I want to do this as a way of showing you that people know a lot, in fact, but in fact it takes sometimes something to pull it out of them, to draw it out, so they actually can do it for themselves. So can you tell me, um, for example, just to start off with, another word with the same sound as a? And I'll write, when you do it, I'll write it in. Bag. Sorry? Bag. Bag. Okay. Bag. Awesome. So, another one? Another one? Yes, please. Let's find more for that one. Cat. 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 Sorry? Which one? Matt, M-A-T. M-A-T, okay, fantastic, okay. All right, now, let's, okay, that's enough. So, so now you, I'm just make sure, I just wanted to make sure that all of you understand what's going on there. Okay, so the next thing is, I want you to think of another, of another um, word with the sound, with the letter A in it, but different sound. Come on, you're English teachers. <laughs> another sound? Another, 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 I want another word using the same letter A, but different sound, not A. The first let column is, is the sound A. What's, I want another, another sound. A. A. What's a word? A. Okay. A. Okay. Another one? Another another sound, another word with the same sound, please. Make. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. So now we have um, two two sounds. Okay. Let's do another one. I want another another sound with the letter A. Does. Sorry. Does. E. Sorry. Try. Can can somebody maybe somebody's got a microphone there can actually call out because it's very hard to hear the audience. So somebody's got a an, um, a microphone there. Could they please call it out? Jars. Jars. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, jar. Okay, so jar is another sound. Ah, ah right. All right. Car. Okay. Car. So what's the next one? Sorry. Bar. 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 Okay. All right. Now, okay. So. Just let's now, now let's now with these three in column number three, there are three words with with the same sound. So and the spelling is very similar. So we're using a r. Do you know any other word with the same sound a but different different pattern? So this is an a r pattern. So we have many words like this in English. You know star, far. Okay. Now do you know do you know any other? Um, 
any other um, pattern, but same sound. Ask. 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 Okay. Task. Okay, that's cool. Excellent. All right. And and okay, so that's another one. And so another pattern. Another one, for example, past. All right, I'll just make three words just to get people clear. There's another one that we have in English. Another pattern. Same sound. Sorry. No, no. Same sound. Ah, ah. Star. 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 The star is this one here. Yeah? Star. 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 Yeah, but that, I think it's the same. It's the same pattern, right? This is the one pattern. So this is another pattern here. I want another pattern. How do you spell that? B A R N. Ah, oh, balm. Sorry. Yes. Thank you for that. Okay. So that's another one. Balm. And then another one, for example, calm. Half. Okay. And. Sorry? Palm. 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 Okay. Okay, so it's another pattern. Bark. B How do you spell that, sorry? B A R K. Okay, but bark is the same one as this, right? It's the same pattern as that. I want a different pattern. Okay, so this one, at the moment you're stuck. All right, so I'll put a little thing up here, all right, for now. So we'll come back to it, maybe somebody might have an idea. Let's go to sound number four. What's another sound that's with using letter A, right? Tall. 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 This one? Okay, yeah, you got it. Yeah, four. Small. Okay, so you got that one. Okay, so that's an, that's an easy one. Okay, so, so what, okay, let's, let's go back to another pattern. Same sound, using A, different pattern. Call. Call is the same, right? It's just call is like just to hear. I want a different pattern. Hot. 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 How do you spell that, sorry? I, sorry, I can't, it's very really difficult to hear, so you have to spell it out. Taught. How do you spell it? T A R K. That's very funny. So. <laughs> Start. Start. Talk. Talk. Okay, talk. Talk. Okay, talk. All right. Talk. All right. Taught. Okay, so taught. Okay, so taught is another one. Uh, and so there's another one. Caught. Okay. Not, what's another one? Yeah. 
Autumn. 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 Ah, oh, good man. That's an unusual one, but we have those. That's right. We have autumn, and then we've got Paul, right? And then um, so there's a, there's one which is. Um, <laughs> Water. 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 Yep. Okay, up here, water. And there's another one which is spelt with AR. How, which words spell AR give you all? That's it. Okay, so war. War. Ward. Ward. Okay, so 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 here, so you can see with these ones we're talking about here patterns, and the patterns here in English are very powerful, in fact, um, and the patterns really, you, you know, you don't have to say very much. I find with students that once they start seeing these patterns, you can see their eyes open because you don't have to say anything; you can just say, ah. Oh, you see these ones here with AR, you will never find this R with the WAR. It's impossible there. Like in English, it doesn't work. For some reason, it just come. It, you know, this thing here, we put it here, which is interesting. But that's what happens. Anyway, that's that's call number four. That's sound number four. Let's go to sound number five. We're half. We're not halfway there yet. Blade. Sorry, blade. Plate. Plate. Well, plate. If, if I hear correctly, plate goes here. <laughs> so come on, you English teachers. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to take pity on you, I don't usually do this, but I'm, I'm going to put the last three here. We have one, we have, we have a, a, um, a sound where it makes the it, sorry, where it makes the it sound, there's one that makes the it sound, and there's one that makes the o sound. So A will take these three sounds, the short vowel sounds, right? E, E, O. Do you have any idea of which, when do you use E when A sounds E or A sounds E or A sounds O? Sit. Sit. That sit is sit. S I T. It's not A. It's 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 the sound. It's it's you need to use. I come back to this. The letter, right, has to be the letter A. So I want to see the letter A here, right? So this is just the um, um, the sound, right? This is just the sound we're talking about. But here, we want to see the letter A. So when the letter A makes the S sound, or when the letter A makes the E sound, or when the letter A makes the O sound. This one is very, very unusual in English. This one, not so unusual. And this is not so unusual. We have, we have probably about 15 or 20 of these words. Where do you put the seat? Where do you put it? Into the word. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you a hint, okay? So, 
Um, where are we? So, and these words are very common words, right? We're not talking about, hang on. And this is A. Okay, here's one of them. And this one is... Okay. This is very, very common. Probably learning the first few months of learning English. I mean, maybe the first two weeks. Who knows? Oops, what happened here? Come on. Get to work. <laughs> if you need to write things down, you need to write. But I mean, this this is like you know, I'm I'm letting you work on this because you sh you need you know this. It's the same with the students. Like you know, I know with my students that there are things that they know, and I'm not going to tell them. I'll give them hints, finally. But they know it. In the same way you know this, I know you know this. You just need to, you know, dredge your mind, go into your mind and, and look, dig, dig deep. And still, we haven't even got, we've got four out of the ten so far, right? What's happening here? Sit with, uh, so you're all stuck? Are you going to give up or what's going to happen? <laughs> ah, what did you say, sorry? What did somebody say? <laughs> Air. Okay. So air is pretty good, but it's got it's um actually like it's the I'll, I'll give it to you like in here down right. It's a it's a sort of a, a second. What happened here? Ah, oh, hang on. I'll take it. Something happened here with this one. I'll get rid of it. It's causing me problems. Um, I'll put it down here as another pattern. Uh, but there's another one that we have, which is the main one, which is it's the same sound, air. How do you spell air? The other way. Put a put a constant before it. Sorry. Tear. Tear. Okay. Tear is one I will put down here for the moment. This one. And pair, right? These are pairs. But there's another one which is the simple sound, just one letter A. Yeah. 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 It's a um, different sound. This is tear, air, like this sound, right? What's the, another sound, another word, another where the spelling is just A, nothing else. Put a consonant before it. Put a consonant before it and say air. Dare. Okay. Sounds like dare. Okay. So dare. And we have many of those, right? Care. Fair. Stare. And, and and so forth and you know we have lots of those. So now now we're halfway there. You can start to relax a little bit, <laughs> but you have five more to go. Okay, I'll give you another hint because I can see you are struggling. I can't see your faces, so I'm not sure what's going on. 
So what's the most common sound in English? What's the most common sound in English? Yeah, that's what, it's called the schwa. The schwa, right? Yeah, uh. Okay. So think of a think of a word with with the with where the letter is the the letter A is the schwa, or the uh. Sorry. Come on. First letter. A. Make it the first letter. Make it easy. The first letter A, and then it's uh, something. Sure. Sorry. About. About. Yeah, I don't know if you said that. About. Okay. Along. And we have, again, I mean, there's thousands of words where the letter A takes the sound of schwa. Thousands. And, you, and the patterns there are. You can use it for all day. Along. A door. A door. That's it. Um, there, there, you can, so there's many in the beginning. I mean, there's some at the end. Mica or umbrella. Um, and there's some in the middle, but I won't do this because, you know, it's, it's a different problem. But nevertheless, this letter takes that sound. Okay, so there's three of these, which still you are struggling with. <laughs> and there's one more. No, come on. If I, if I tell you you'll be very embarrassed. <laughs> very embarrassed. I don't know what happens. Why, why this is coming to a formula, I've got no idea. Okay. All right. I'm, I'll put, I'll give you one more hint. This is an S. And there's a letter here. The letter A is O, right? O. Okay, S, H. Letter is it A is the off sound. What's the first letter? It must be a consonant, right? <laughs> Sorry. You've got 21, 21 chances to get this right. No. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, the sound is the letter A is O, oh, so it's Osh. What's the first sound? All right. Wash. Yes. Wash. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? So there's. I mean, the other one, just to give you a sense of this, a lot of them. <laughs> it's what, what? So the so the W A right? The W A is a pattern in English. 
there, there is w, down, down in the here there is the war but where there's no r right you come to this little problem in english right and there's another one which i'll tell you free of charge is this one so here the, the q and the u give you the sounds so this u actually is w so it's squat what squalid squalid so it follows the same rule so where the where the sound w what comes before the this letter it creates this o oh sound all right this one well, time's running out here so i'm aware of the time so this one and i know i won't see it again probably for a long time this one is this one here and there's not many of those the thames river so this sound is the f sound thames right there's very 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 few of these very very few but of this one there are many and i'll give you a little hint because i can see you're getting stressed <laughs> So the, the last three letters are A G E. What's the first? You can make there's many of them. Some of you live in this, maybe. In Australia, we don't have these things, but in Indonesia, you have them. In Malaysia, you have them. In, in yeah, we don't. We don't really. I mean, in England, England, you have them. I think. Yeah, we we call them those things. Struggle, struggle, huh? What's happening? Still nothing. Mamma mia. <laughs> One more letter. What's the letter? Come on. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> village. Village. Vi no, it's not village. It's village. Village. <laughs> village. Village. That's it. You got it. So in English, this A G E at the end, we have many of them. So there's pillage. Storage. 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 That's right. You can, you can make up many many of these words in English. We have them with A G E. It takes the I sound. It's storage, not storage. It's storage. Pillage. Village. Okay. I hope today has been some use to you. Um, I, uh, these ideas are something that some of you have come across before, I'm sure. Some bits may be a little bit different, some new to you, I'm not sure. So if you want some more background information and how, this, how you can make it sort of work for you, I, I've written a book about this that you can see the, the one in the orange and red, Language Learning Unlocked. And I've written another one that basically talks about to improve your memory for learning languages. Um, so you can check out these ideas in the book, and they're both available online at the the um, those, those web web addresses. And um, there's also a website down there you can basically have a look at, and some of the ideas are up there. And if you'd like to uh, ask me a question, uh, you're welcome to email me. I'm happy to have a chat with you about it online. So again, okay. thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you very much.
Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Okay. Bye-bye. Apa kabar? Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.